Hello, what is up guys? Evil Duos Arm here today, and today I have for you part 6 of our how to make your own 2D side-scrolling video game tutorial. And in this part, what we're going to do is go ahead and fix some of our animation errors and some of our inconsistencies with our character. So if you go ahead and hop into the play preview here from our menu that we finished off on last time, you go ahead and throw some kunai or whatever, you can spam the kunai, you can spam your swords all at once, so that's obviously not as intended. Additionally, you can just go ahead and throw as many kunai as you want, which is fine right now while we're testing. But at some point, when you're actually playing this game on a computer, having infinite number of kunai just like laying around your level is going to bog down the game and ultimately crash it. So we need to put some sort of cap on the number of kunai that our character can have uh, so that they don't just go ahead and flood the level. So to do that, we're going to go ahead into our character blueprint. So our character blueprint, once again, is located in the character folder we created. So go to your content folder out here, character, 2D side scroller character. So in here, what you're going to want to do is navigate up to the handle animation section and you're going to want to drag these two nodes off a little bit so our input action sword input action throw so highlight both of those and drag them away the heck over here because we need a lot of space you can also just go ahead and delete these lines so to go ahead and delete these lines just alt left click alt left click delete both of those lines compile save so first things first we need to add a limit to the number of kunai that our character can throw so to do that we're going to add a variable to our character so over here on the left click on the plus variable button. This new variable is going to be a float. So the variable option, after you've gone ahead and click new variable, up in the top right, you'll have the option to call it. So first we're gonna call this ammo or kunai or whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna call it ammo to make it easier for myself. Next we need to change the variable to a float. So this option right here, variable type, float. Compile, save. Then we're going to have to be able to set our default value. So later on when we're working through this game and creating like a customization menu, we're going to have the ability to change this variable so our player starts levels with more kunai. But for now, we're just going to set it to 10 um, just for testing purposes. So compile, save. So that once again was down here, this default value in the bottom corner. Set that to 10, compile, save. So what we want to do now is we want to check to see if the player has ammo before they go ahead and do this. So what we're going to do is the same thing we've been doing, like the same exact check that we did right here. We're going to have literally the same exact check. So in fact, if you wanted to, you could, eh, no, nah, it's really not worth it. We're just going to go ahead and hit right click and type in branch. From here, we're going to want to go ahead and uh, grab our ammo variable. So grab the variable and then get ammo, or you could just uh, right click and typed in ammo as well. Get ammo, set ammo. We want to get the ammo. Um, what we want to do with the ammo is we want to check to see if it's greater than uh, zero. So basically, if the ammo variable is greater than zero, we'll be able to throw a kunai. So we're going to type in the greater than symbol, float greater than float, and we want to see if it's bigger than zero. If it is, is when we're going to go ahead and do something. So if it is greater than zero, what we want to do is we want to take ammo, so we want to get our ammo, and we want to subtract one from it. So we're going to type in the minus number, float minus float, and we're going to subtract one from that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set ammo. So right click set ammo and that will set our ammo variable to this new number go ahead and connect this node into the set ammo ammo node go ahead and collect the true node into the set node and into this branch so this is our first branch here um, that we're creating done so basically what is this branch doing what it's going to do is going to check our ammo make sure that we have more than zero ammo basically making sure that we have any ammo if we do have any ammo it's going to go ahead and subtract one from our total so if we have nine it'll go down to eight and we'll tell that to be the new ammo variable. So it'll set the ammo variable back down to eight. So basically every time you throw a kunai, it's gonna subtract one until you get to zero, at which point you will no longer be able to throw any kunai blades. If you don't have enough kunai, if you are uh, not greater than zero, basically if you are equal to zero, you won't be able to do a darn thing. Nothing's gonna happen. The player won't throw any kunai. He won't consume any stamina. He won't do any of the other stuff. We're gonna have to go ahead and add into the code here in a second. So that fixes that issue. Our player only has 10 shots. Now what we want to do is we want to fix the issue of uh, being able to do multiple attacks at the same time, being able to use your sword attack or being able to use your kunai attack at the same time. So for that, what we want to do is we want to throw another branch, and this is going to be closer to the action. So we're going to right-click and add a branch, and we're going to right-click and add a branch. So what we're going to check for with this branch is we're going to check to see if you're doing one or the other animations. So if you remember correctly from way back ago, I think it might have been episode 2 or 3, um, we added two variables. One was called throwing for, for uh, one was called throwing for throwing our kunai, and one was called sorting for using the sword attack. So what we want to do is we want to check before we do one or the other. We want to make sure we're not already doing one of them. So for the sword attack, so what we'll do is click the pre the pressed button. And what we want to do is check to see if we're already throwing a kunai. So we're going to drag in the kunai option. So once again, the kunai option was throwing. So if we are throwing something, we don't want to do anything. If we're not throwing something, then we can proceed. Same thing with this one. We want to go to our throw variable. We want to check and see if we're already using our sword. If we are already using our sword, we're not going to do anything. If we aren't, we're going to do something. 
that something we're going to do is actually proceed along with our path. So we can go ahead and connect the false all the way across to both of these. So if we go ahead and uh, looked at what the game looks like now, you're going to see that um, it won't let you do one attack or the other spamming. You can't spam back and forth between the two, but however you can spam the same one over and over and over again even though your animation is not complete. Um, we are out of kunai as well. So what we want to do is we want to make it so that we only do these, each of these attacks one time. So to make it so we only do them one time, what we're going to do is add a, uh, a node called do once. So really simple, do once. This node right here basically means it's only going to do the attack one time. So what we want to do is we want to click control drag to bring this over to the start and drag this in. Now what is going to reset this do once? Basically what it's saying is it'll only attack one time now. To reset this, what we want to do is when we've completed the attack and gone through the whole process here for this kunai attack, we're going to connect the node from the end of it over to this reset. So basically when the kunai is done being thrown, it's going to reset and it'll let you throw another kunai. Same thing with this one, we're going to add a do once to it. We're going to connect uh, this part right here, the false into the input, the completed into the input of the previous one that we'd already done. Connect the reset to the end of this path, which is right here. I know it's getting a bit sloppy. I can try and organize this a little bit better later. Um, but basically, so what that is saying is that we're going to check to see if we're throwing a shuriken, uh, throwing a kunai, rather, sorry. If we're throwing a kunai, we're not going to do anything. If we aren't throwing a kunai, we can go ahead and start attacking. So what we want to do is attack one time. Don't let me keep spamming this. And then go ahead and to subtract from our stamina, use our sorting variable, and go ahead and uh, basically continue with our attacking and all of that. So if we compile, save, and hit play now, you will see that you can only use the attack one time before it goes. Same thing with kunai, you can only throw one kunai at a time, you can't spam the kunai and continue to blast them. So our animations have been fixed. The only thing left to do is to go ahead and add the variable for how many kunai the player has left to the top of our HUD. So go ahead and do that, we're going to head down back into our main content folder. So our main content folder, we placed all of this inside of the widgets folder, which was HUD. So inside of the HUD folder, we need to go ahead and add another set of things. So once again, like when we were setting up the uh, health and stamina bars, we're going to go ahead and get a horizontal box. So this horizontal box is going to go right here, and we'll just drop that right in here. So inside this horizontal box, we want to put two text boxes. So text, and we're going to go ahead and drop text one in here, and we're going to go ahead and drop text two right in here. So now we have our two text blocks right in there. So the first text block, what we're going to write inside of it is kunai remaining. So our little text block now says kunai remaining. We can go ahead and center these and hit fill and all is right with the cosmos. Well, not quite actually. We want auto. There we go. So now we have to go ahead and set this other text block. So this other text block, once again, we're going to click both of the center options over here on the right side. Center both of those options. What we want to do is we want to bind this text. So we're going to click the bind button again and we're going to create a new binding for this text. This text is going to be determined by that variable that we had on our character. So once again, we're going to go ahead and get player character. From get player character, we're going to drag off and we're going to type in cast to 2D side scroller character. So basically, we're getting the character that the player is playing as, checking to see if it is the player that we want to pull the variable from. If it is the player that we want to pull the variable from, we want to get ammo, which is the variable we just created. And we want to return that value into the string over there. So basically, it's just going to print off the variable that we see right there. Um, the other thing that we're going to have to do, because if I just went ahead and clicked play right now, oh, actually, it works. Never mind. Um, but sometimes when you use floats, it's going to put the 0 because it is a float. So one thing that you might have to do is truncate this. So if you typed in truncate, it would truncate it down to an integer. And you could plug in that same integer into the return node, and it would only print off the uh, 10 value instead of the 0 .000. So whichever way you want to go about that, it seems to work without doing it. But if it is not working for you, you're going to have to use this truncate function that you see right here. So what we're going to do is head back into our uh, display designer over here at this top right corner and extend our little box a little bit to make it look a little bit prettier. So we're going to go ahead and click on the horizontal box that we put in originally, which is down here. And we'll make it a little bit bigger so it fills the space a little better. Um, also, after kunai remaining, we're going to add a colon and a space to put a little bit of spacing between that. And now if we hit play, there we go, we've got our kunai remaining, and if we go ahead and throw a kunai, we see that the number decreases, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, so it decreases as we throw kunai until we hit 0, at which point the player can no longer throw kunai. Um, and basically, that is it, guys. Uh, that is what we wanted to go over here. We wanted to fix our animations, add a little bit of our HUD display, and make it so our player feels more like a, an actual character. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to stay tuned for the rest of the series. You know, like and subscribe to make sure you stay updated on the series. Got a lot more videos coming out in it. And uh, in the next video, 
what we're going to do is go ahead and create our first obstacle for the player. So we're going to create something that can actually kill you in the game. So you can uh, go ahead and actually play in, in a game instead of just walking around and throwing kunai around. So anyway, guys, I will see you at the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.